Hey guys, all the way with Alloway here with Jerusha Hess, writer and director of Austin Land. So I absolutely love this movie. Aww. I thought it was hilarious. And my big question is, are you yourself a Jane Austen fan? <laughs> so that answer, I have to tell you two things. First off, yes, I've read many of the novels. I was an English major until I started doing film and then I became an English minor. But I'm I am not the crazy fan that Jane Hayes is. I think this movie is for the Jane Austen fans, the real aficionados, and it's also for the people who think those guys are funny. Yeah. And charmed by them. Right. Not mm -hmm. in a malicious way, but think that fandom in general is kind of a funny thing. Yeah. So. Well, I mean, there's so much merchandise in the film. I just, when, when we first see, you know, Carrie Russell's apartment, we're like, how, where did you find all of this stuff? And you guys actually have the Colin Firth cardboard cut out downstairs. <laughs> I took a picture next to it. So where did you, I mean, was this stuff that you actually found online or that the movie made? A lot of it. I think there's some Jane Austen fan website, I don't know it, but mm -hmm. they sell the totes and, but we just, you know, got inside of her head. My production designer was brilliant. He just thought to himself, what would this little girl, doesn't have, you know, all the means in the world, how would she make her little, you know, New York City apartment feel like the English countryside? And it's with, you know, chintz and tea, tea kettles and, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. Crocheted pillows. Yes, and hand tatted lace and <laughs> fake flowers and feathers everywhere and what is she like a shadow box of her gloves? It just was all you could just see that she's been gathering for mm -hmm. years and years. Mm -hmm. and everything's well, she, a little homespun. It's funny you called her a girl because she's actually a woman. Yes. Um, but I like that, you know, we're kind of introduced to the movie going, okay, this is a movie made by women mm -hmm. with Stephanie Meyer, you know, the Twilight series producing, and then you adapted with Shannon Hill from her novel. So why was it important um, for you, coming from Napoleon Dynamite and Nacho Libre, to make a movie by women for women? I just, I got sick of them. Got sick of boys. Is that okay? I have a brother. I've been there. I have seven brothers. Oh my god! <laughs> and my husband has six brothers. And so I've been surrounded by boys my whole life, and I was never able to really like be girly ever. Yeah. Wasn't allowed it. And um, I I had had a daughter, and she was like growing up, and she all of a sudden started getting really like girly, and I was just feeling like, what what am I doing for my my daughter? And not to say that Napoleon isn't for girls, because absolutely all all people, all little people love Napoleon and Nacho Libre. Yeah. It really strikes a chord with 10 year olds. <laughs> and I just wanted something, you know, just something that I could just check out to a little yeah, bit. Yeah, totally. Well, I think Carrie Russell too, casting her when I first, you know, back at Sundance was like, Carrie Russell's in this movie. I totally see it because I think she has been since Felicity kind of this voice of women mm. for that generation when Felicity so was running and now so was that your purpose in casting her? Were there other factors? I just, you know, I, I think she's like a, a doll, like doll-like. She or looks just, like a doll. Yes, there's something so feminine and sweet about her, but I think she can, and not to say that we made her look dorky, but I think her, she can play dorky pretty well. You know, her mm -hmm. Felicity character was really awkward, mm -hmm. and I really, I just wanted someone who wasn't very comfortable in their skin and becomes more comfortable. Right. I hate when the the beautiful woman is like dressed down to be like the ugly girl. Like I didn't want to, they didn't want to go there. I like that. I just accept that she's a beautiful girl, but she's got this arrested development and she's stuck yes. in this crazy cat house. Mm -hmm. Oh, not, but you know, like she's a cat lady. <laughs> yeah. Having cats. Yeah. She's stuck. She goes mm -hmm. to the cat house in England. Yeah. Every time. But she just was, you know, trapped. Yeah. And I think it was believable that she, was kind of inherently awkward. And then you've got Jennifer Coolidge, who let me tell you in the screening was just cracking me up. I know, she like, you lose half her jokes because you're laughing from the last one. Well, time. yeah, how many of those jokes when she was talking in the British <laughs> accent and it was totally off? How much of that was in the script and how much did you just go, Jennifer, take it and play? So it was in the, it was definitely in the script that she was this, you know, brash, you know, American woman who's coming out there to, to just get laid, essentially. Yeah. And, and she does it all wrong and she's very over the top. But she is just the most brilliant woman in the world and you give her any line and she makes it 10 times funnier. And yeah. so we had, you know, hours of outtakes of her just mm -hmm. like riffing on funny stuff. And so- Bonus material on bonus the DVD? Material, yes, absolutely. I'll be looking forward to it. Yeah, well, and I think too, uh, 
you, you kind of start the movie thinking, okay, this is a rom-com. You know, I'm going to start this lovely movie and we're going to see her ride into love like, mm -hmm. you know, like a typical Jane Austen novel, but it's almost an anti-romance film, which there's a twist of it, which I liked because, you know, it's not, it's not all easy. It kind of says the Jane Austen tale is a myth. Was that kind of your intention? Um, you know, I definitely wanted her to get the boy in the end. But it's true, you don't want it to be too easy and too typical. And I know the twists are like, you know, kind of, you kind of see him coming from a mile away. But still, you just want her to feel a little self-actualized, like she's gotten over this craziness. Mm -hmm. You just have to get to that point. And then anything else can happen. Like, sure, you get the boy. Great. Convenient. Mm -hmm. But just so that you feel like you can stand on your two feet. Exactly. And I think that that's something that, you know... With he's not just that into you and all of these stories of women, they're starting to say, oh, you actually get the guy when you're okay just being yourself. Yes. And I really enjoyed that message with the film. Um, and the character of Mr. Darcy, I think he's perplexing to all women, you know. Through. Why do we like, like, the guy that's a douche to us? I don't know. It's really a really bad message. It's a really yeah. bad message. That that's, yeah. Go for the guy that's a jerk. I don't, I mean, <laughs> do you think that Mr. Darcy, this non-communicative, non-emotional man can exist and capture the modern day woman? Um, I think many men are that already and we are all hoping. We just hope that like you can change him um, because these shows say yeah you can change him. Like be witty enough and he'll like... He'll love you. He'll take off his cravat for you. <laughs> So I don't know. I don't know about for the modern women what, it's, what it says. It's just a fairy tale. It's just all a fairy tale and it's just something for us to believe in. But I think at the end of the day, we have to be realistic as well. Yeah, exactly. Sometimes it's nicer just to go with the nice boy. I know. I know. <laughs> Did you hear that? She said it. Go with the nice boy. I know. I married the nice boy and he's a dreamboat. See? He's just so nice and always so sweet to me. Oh. So. Uh, so I'm curious what's next. I mean, I'd love to see, I know you've dabbled in TV a little bit mm. with Napoleon Dynamite, but I feel like there's characters and there's a voice I would love to see in TV. Have you thought about that? Yeah, TV is hard. It's a hard business to be in today. And ratings, it's like, it's become a whole different mess because I think we're in a transition mode of where TV is going versus where the internet is going. And, and it's just a big blend. And um, I want to I get in it when it's figured itself out. <laughs> Yes. I don't yes. want to jump in right this moment because I think there's going to be a big shift. Yeah, I mean with Netflix and Hulu and it's just Absolutely. so crazy. Absolutely. So uh, what do you have Network to TV. Network, yes. Network TV versus all the other channel, like all mm -hmm. the other vehicles of making television. Mm -hmm. So do you have any projects coming up? My husband and I are writing something together again, um, a little comedy that he'll direct and that's just mm -hmm. always super fun to just hole, hole up and create. Yeah, it's just fun. It's fun to write with him again. We had a little break mm -hmm. for a while. It's fun to get back back in that saddle. And I, you know, I, Shannon Hale, who I wrote this movie with, I think someday we'll write again together. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I'm just okay. Have you ever thought about writing with Stephanie Meyer? No, I don't think she isn't a screenwriter. It's not what she does. Yeah, but she has novels. She does yeah, novels. I'm just right. waiting. I'm waiting for her next novel. And she goes, here you go. I'm waiting for her next paranormal romance. <laughs> right? To sweep me away. <laughs> well, thank you so much. Thank Congrats you. on the film. That's true. Hess for Austin Land.